Hello there good people, how's it going? My name is Marco and today I'm a little bit more excited, a little bit more happy. But anyway, this is going to be episode number two in this Code Wars challenge type of thing. And today specifically I'm going to use uh, Python, I'm gonna do it with Python. Last week I was using JavaScript. If you want to see the video, there's gonna be a pop-up uh, if I find out how to do it. But uh, this week is going to be all about Python. Just a quick reminder, if you like this content, if you want to see more, well don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment down below. And now that you're here, well, just leave a like. Why not? I mean, it's best practice. For those who don't know, the Code Wars is a simple website where you can sign up to and you can compete with other programmers solving challenges and problems or you can just train on your own just by yourself that is exactly what I'm doing so you're given challenges with different um, difficulty levels I'm gonna focus on the easiest one for today uh, and uh, you will see that they are easy but not as easy as you think you have to think okay and this is the good thing about this I said think too many times well, so, without further ado, let's start coding. All right, so let's go. I have the dashboard in front of me and uh, let's start. I've already looked for Python projects and the level is always going to be between eight and seven to keep it simple. And uh, let's see what I can do. This, this one looks pretty, well, interesting. That start construction. Let's see what this is about. Okay, story. The construction of the new Death Star is almost complete. It only needs a certain amount of three materials, iron, steel and chromium. Hmm. The Emperor wants the construction finished within a week because he senses an impeding rebel attack. He knows the battle station will be destroyed <laughs> if it is not completed with this time frame. He has already ordered enough material delivered to the station within a week. The problem is the rebel are attacking the supply routes and there are different amounts of material arriving at the station each week. Will the station be ready in time or will it be destroyed? Okay, let's see what this is about. Task. The required resources are this. Input will consist of an array with eight elements. The first seven elements are the shipments. Three elements long arrays where each number corresponds to the amount of material that was ordered. The last element is a number representing the day of the rebel attack, zero indexed. Any materials which should have been delivered that day will be lost. Later shipments will be cancelled due to the trading route becoming unsafe. The output will be one of, the pos of two possible strings. In case enough resources were delivered before the attack return, the station is completed. Otherwise return, the station is destroyed, it needed blah 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 for completion, where x, y and z are the quantities of the respective material. Wow, this is a super long one, it sounds fun, uh, why not, doesn't change anything, let's train it, I'm not sure I even got that right, so for this setup I'm gonna use PyCharm this time and I always like to use uh, an external code editor because despite the fact that Code Wars provides code editor like this as you can see like debugging is not is not a real thing because you have the test button but you basically just receive the result of the of the test and uh, I like to check where I am at uh, when I'm coding so we use PyCharm for this one but this is a quite a long one so I need to read everything so let's try and understand what I need to do so this is the test and I will receive eight arguments oh it's not eight arguments it's two arguments this is a two-dimensional array so it is an array of arrays and it's it has got one two three four five six seven the session is destroyed. And this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we seven. Oh, okay. I think I get it. So these are our 
our objectives. So in the hmm, 50 gigaton of chromium, and here we got 49. And since the the date is just one day, this is going to be one delivery, and it's not enough material. So I guess that if I have five days, I can count five deliveries and sum all the deliveries that I can get and see if I reach this uh, objectives. If I do, well then the station is completed. And I don't understand what I was saying here about the last element. Any material which should have been delivered that day will be lost. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, five is not included, I guess. So five days, but five is not included. So one is not even included. So I guess I could even make the case of, a, of an edge case. Like if it's one, you never win because you don't, you don't, you never have enough material, I guess. Okay, let's see. And later shipments will be cancelled due to the train route becoming unsafe. Okay, so so here I have only one, two, three, four until here. Because on the fifth day, the the last element, any materials which should have been delivered that day will be lost. And later shipments will be cancelled. So there's no. This is not even considered. Okay, I have a few ideas here. I have a two-dimensional array and I can sum some of it. Or I can just uh, splice it or slice it, I think. So I just take the elements that I need. In this case, it would be the day minus one because the day doesn't count the material. So five, I have four, I slice it, I slice this input array in four, and I would have only this. And what can I do with it? I'm, I mean, there are tons of solutions. Probably what I'm thinking about is a brute force solution, just uh, creating a loop uh, in the array and sum each element with each one. But there could be an easier solution. And then it wants the station is destroyed, it needed zero ion, zero is still one chromium. So it needs a difference. Okay, so let's start. Now I think I get the problem. I can start. Let's see. So the objectives are. I might initialize it, so I just say iron equal 100, steel equal 75, and chromium is equal to 50. Then I take the array and I can say deliveries is actually wick, which I've seen is the two dimension array and I slice it is like this I always want the beginning and I can say attack minus one so basically this gives me this doesn't count the day I wonder if it counts anyway I don't know because sometimes when you slice it like this it always count the first index, but not the last. So five would be out anyway. Let's try. Um, let's say, I want to see what comes out of this. So I'm gonna call the function. Okay, I'm gonna give it the input like this. I just want to see if I get what I expect. So from here, I should get just one, two, three, and four elements without the fifth. Let's see if this is what I get. 
one, two, three, four, five. No. Okay, so I need to do minus one. Okay, like this works. So now I've sliced zoom in a little bit. Now I have sliced the array and I have four elements, which are the four actual deliveries. On the fifth day I have the attack, so no deliveries. And for the you know the day after it just doesn't exist. Now what I want to do is let's format the string. I like to format the string because it might help me, you know, understand what I have. So the station is destroyed. This is gonna be an X, an F, an F string, fail string. The station is destroyed and needed. This is going to be like this, this, yep, and like this. This is gonna be chromium, steel, and iron. So I need to end up with these numbers. So what I wanna do is not actually, well, I could, yeah, I could, because I was thinking, I do a loop inside of this array, and basically with a two-dimensional array, I need to nest the for loop inside of it so that I can get access to these smaller arrays and then I can just subtract this to the iron, the second, to the steel and, and etc and I will be left I will be left with the remainder. But I will what I could actually do instead is sum it all up and if this becomes zero or negative uh, it's okay. So, but if if it is positive, so greater than zero, well then I failed. Okay, okay, let's start something. Let's start with some iron. And this is zero. Some steel. And this is zero, yeah, like this. And then some chromium. And this is zero as well. Now, for i n delivers, and this is an array of arrays, so I need to get into individual arrays, so for j n delivers i index i, and I didn't spell it right, you need to spell it right. So now I am looping over this single array inside and I know that um, actually I could do something like, haha, <laughs> no, 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 I don't need this. I know that it's always going to be three elements and the first one is always going to be iron and then steel and then chromium. So I can just do it like this. Some iron is plus equal deliveries index i index zero basically at the first position this element and I can copy this and just do it for all the other elements but this time with this would be steel and chromium and this is going to be one and two. Okay. Once this loop is ended, and I honestly like this more because it's not a nested for loop, so it's even better. Now that I have this, I'm wondering if I could do it with uh, least comprehension, but let's be, let's do it as simple as possible. Now that I have this, I want to see what comes out of it. So I'm gonna print out some iron, some steel and some chromium. Let's try it and see. Last list indices must be integers or slices, not list. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
Oh, that's why, yeah. Hmm. No, wait. Hmm. I'm an idiot. I'm just an idiot. It is like this. I don't need deliveries. Because I is not an index. It's actually the actual element. Too much JavaScript. Um, so this gives me each element. Doesn't give me the index. If I wanted the index, I should have put range deliveries or enumerate range deliveries. That would have given me the index. So this should be fine now. Yeah, okay. So I have the sum is 195 and 60. So this should pass. And what I want to do is, okay, now that I have it, the sum, I can just put an if loop. An if uh, loop, not loop, if statement. And the if statement can just say if, yeah, if sum iron is greater or equal to iron. You know what? Actually, I like to do something else here. I like to subtract everything from this. So if it's zero, I just return it. Just return it like this. I basically modify it. Let's see if it works. So iron is equal to iron. If sum iron minus iron is equal, smaller or equal to zero. Else is, well, this sum iron minus iron. So basically, this is a, an if statement on one line. I am telling it. This is what I'm telling it. The value of iron is going to be this, the, the delta difference between the sum that I've been giving into the deliveries and the actual iron I need. If this is smaller or equal to zero, it's going to be, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, this is, needs to be zero. Yeah. So if the sum is, if the, the, the difference is going to be smaller or equal to zero, then I just put zero. So I don't need any iron. Uh, otherwise, the value for iron is going to be the delta, the difference. What do I need? And this is going to be negative because it means, yeah, so I'm just going to put it like this. On the other side. Because if I don't reach the quantity, I know that the iron is going to be greater. So I need to do it like this. And I can just copy this for all the others. This time this is going to be steel and this is going to be chromium. All right. And these are going to be steel as well. Yeah. That's a lot of typing. This is chromium. This is chromium as well. Sure. Okay. So now I have the... Well, now I can just put it like this. If iron equal to zero and steel equal to zero and chromium equal to zero well then I return what the, okay I just need to see what I need to return the station is completed okay let's print it out as well just for debugging and fail string otherwise return well i don't even do it otherwise it's going to be enough so this is going to be return in case it's you know it's not zero so this is false this is going to be return if it is actually um, if all the sums are zero let's see if it works of course I mean, yeah, and there is something that I'm not considering here. 
Hmm. Okay, debugging. Good old print statement, why not? Let's see what the values of these are. Zero, minus 20, minus 10. Yes. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I need to invert this one. Yeah, I need to invert this one. I'm just stupid, yeah. So it's the same problem. Because uh, if this is has to be, if this old statement has to be smaller than zero, it means that I have more iron than I need. I got delivered more iron than I need. So it needs to be on the opposite because this is always going to be positive. And so it goes into the other one. Unless you have zero, then it's the only time you get it right. Yeah. Yeah, I should have thought that before, but hey. It happens. Okay, now this should work correctly. Okay, zero, zero, zero. The station is complete. Let's stop printing out this one. And let's see. Copying this one out is actually going to work. It is a bit long, but yeah, I, I don't mind it. I mean, it's precise at least. Let's see if it works. Oh, it needed 100 iron, 75 steel, and 50 configuration should equal zero, zero, and one chromium for completion. This is the first test. Okay, yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is the base case I was talking about. Because when I slice here, yeah, I slice from the beginning. So what it does is basically, this is gonna be zero. This is gonna take the first element. And the first element, uh, it cannot be considered because I have an attack on the first day and on the first day there are no deliveries. So I should consider um, this case, which is if attack is equal to one, of course I don't have basically anything. So I need everything. Wait, that's not true actually. This is not the debugging it's going. Well, this is actually kind of, because this is what my uh, script did. It needed 100 iron, 75 steel and 50 chromium. So basically it needed everything. But actually what it says is, no, 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 it didn't need, it just need one chromium. Because the first delivery got delivered. But this is not what they said because the instruction said that on the attack there were no delivers. So if the attack is on the first day, I should not, I shouldn't, I should not have any delivers. And uh, this is quite annoying. Yeah, this is quite annoying. And it only works. So this is one of the cases that I don't like the way these cases are written because I mean if you tell me that the, that on the day of the attack there is not going to be uh, a delivery and you put attack on first day first day is there is not going to be any delivery so why should there be a delivery on this day which is the day of the attack but not for all the others this is not very Accurate. Okay, so let's try and solve it. Let's do it like this. It's the only thing that came up to mind. If attack is equal to one, then the deliveries are going to be. Let's do it like this. Are going to be this. 
so only the first day and it must be considered let's try and debug it this is the array input array and we'll see if it works let's see what comes out huh? it's not subscriptable why? why? for i in the letters oh. because i... no, but it is, it is an array Guys, this is way more, I'm doing it more complicated than this. And I don't understand what's going on. This is an array. So why does it tell me int object is not subscriptable? Yep. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because these returns, okay. Well, I can wrap it around. Oh, I don't like this solution. I can wrap it around in a list. Let's see what comes out. Okay, yeah. zero, zero, 001. Well, it does it. What can I tell you? And it should return this. So now it should work with this new solution. Let's see. Test it again. Okay, now it passes the two. Let's attempt it. These are going to be like more tests. And it fails. Why? Is there something that I'm not considering? It needed 10 iron, zero steel, and eight chromium for completion. And then it basically failed every test. I think I, there's something wrong with my slicing maybe. I didn't read the instruction well. Did I? The instruction is destroyed. It needed 74 iron, zero steel, blah, blah, blah. It needed 58. What's the difference between this zero steel and zero chromium for completion? So I get the steel, but not the chromium. I don't understand why I'm passing some and I'm failing so many. Yeah, this is going to be a nightmare. Okay, I think I get what I was doing wrong. Um, in here, from my PyCharm code, I had attack minus one because I was considering the day. So the first day, it's the first day. And the sixth day, it's the sixth day. I miss one important piece of information, which is that the last element is a number representing the day of the rebel attack, zero indexed. So basically, the attack on the first day, hmm? It is index one. So yeah, this is index five. And so this is zero, one, two, three, four. This need to be considered. So I have one day extra and this is what, what's causing the problem. Yeah, I think I didn't read this right. Well, well good. Let's see if I if I submit it, you can see that it passed all the all the um, all the tests. Wow! Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's always going to be. <laughs> oh, this is a nice solution, actually. Yeah. Well, I think you can do it whenever you want. I mean, however you want. This is quite a good solution, it's brief, concise, I like it. Mine wasn't so concise, but hey, what can you do? Yeah. Okay, let's try a new one. I think it's time for a new one. Alright, maybe I got time for another one. Yeah, sure. What's the real flirt? Nah, sort of race. Oh, I agree. The white mouthed frog, numbers. Triangle area. Number of rectangles in a grid. <laughs> mathematics. Okay, this is my kryptonite. When it comes to mathematics or algebra or geometry even, I'm not good. 
convert number to reverse the array of digits. Circles in polygon. Some, but not all. <laughs> These have done it. Square and sum. Count by x. Pair with a margin. I don't know. I mean, there's so much choice. Some, but not all. Let's see. Okay. Description. Your task is to create a function that, given a sequence and a predicate, returns true if only some, but not all, the elements in the sequence are true after applying the predicate. Okay. Okay, this takes a function. Huh. Oh, this is cool. What is alpha? I don't even know what is alpha is. Probably a method. Let's look at it. Uh, Python is alpha. Yeah, like this, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Check if all the characters in the text are letters. Oh. Well, I've learned something new. I didn't know. Oh, okay, this returns true because some of it returns true. This returns false because there are no letters. This returns false because uh, every, I mean, all are true. So if all are true, true, false. Okay, so this is a function. And I need to execute the function. I think it's easier than I, than I think it is. Let's try. Let's train. It is, I like it because it takes a, a kind of a function inside. I mean, this is a function after all. So let's see what I can do here. Hmm. Yep. Just some. Ah, this is interesting. See, because I could have just returned the predicate for the sequence. So apply the predicate to the sequence. And it would have been fine. It would have been fine. But this is not uh, accepted. This is false. This should be false. And what comes out of this is actually true. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, yep. Yeah. See, this is what concerns me. Because these two elements, they are both greater than three. So this is false. Hmm. I'm always going to receive a, a string or an array. Right? I hope. I can look through the array and check the element. If there is only one that is not, well then I return true because it means that Ah no, but it's not correct. Because if every I mean if there is no one if there is nothing like this one. Oh man, this is seven? Level seven? Am I already this deep? <laughs> ah okay, okay, but this is interesting. I need to think through. I can look through it or not. So this returns false, but it returns true because some of it are. This returns false. This returns false because everything is true. Hmm. I don't know. I keep thinking about a for loop. More, you know, in the sequence, and I apply. How do I even apply this? Let's try it. Let's go into Python. Hmm. Okay, I have a predicate. I wonder if something like a filter function exists, but a filter function works for arrays only well in JavaScript at least 
but what I could do no but there are also the sum function and the every function oh my god what I have in mind is so complicated I don't know if it's so what I want to do is I have a length okay so the string is gonna be 10 length and for each true statement I want to uh, add to account and for each false statement I want to I don't want to add anything so at the end it's gonna I'm gonna have a count and if that count is equal to zero or the length it means it's gonna return false because it means that it's either all of all of the elements in the in the sequence are true or all of the uh, elements in the sequence are false if it's in between these two numbers it means that you know I have hopes it means that it's true just some of it are true but what I'm thinking is how do you pass a function inside here and apply it to the actual this okay let's do it like this because this says str and okay let's try it let's try it. so I have a length and the length is equal to length sequence okay now I have a count and this is gonna be equal to zero now I have my for loop in sequence so for I in sequence so for each element in the sequence I'm gonna apply the predicate the predicate and the argument is gonna be I hoping that it works actually what I could do is if So if this returns true, count is equal one, and just this, I mean just this. So every time I encounter something that is true, I um, uh, increase the counter, let's say, and then what I can do at the end, if count is equal to zero or count is equal to 10 I return false because you can spell it like this otherwise I return true fairly easy okay now it seems easy there's a tricky part where I don't know if the predicate is going to be applied like this because to be honest I never passed a function any function to the to a function in Python let's see some test cases this should return true maybe it would work so I'm gonna, oh, I need to Console log it yeah, console log it, sure. Print it. Too much JavaScript, I told you. Let's see what it tells me. Wow. Okay. Well, that was easy. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see if something else works. Um, this, this one, where everything is false. Uh, yeah. False. Wow. Uh -huh -huh. And this should be false as well. Fascinating. This is actually quite interesting. And if I'm. Okay. This should be false as well. And this is true. Why? <laughs> Told you. Oh, okay, because the length is, yeah. 
it's always going to be like this. No, this is not true as well. This shouldn't be true because it's not just some, but it's all of them. What? <laughs> what? Am I stupid? I put length. I put 10. Should have put length. What? An idiot. Let's do like zero. It should work anyway. It's false. I want to see some true cases. Like this one. Let's see if I get it. This is true. Okay, I like this implementation and let's see if it works. Because after all, it can be be as beautiful as you want, but if it doesn't work, it's useless. Let's test. Passes all the tests. Let's attempt. All right. So yeah, it's not as complicated as I thought it was. Um, so basically what I did uh, it's kind of an implementation of uh, some and every method which you can have uh, for arrays in JavaScript. And in this case, it's the sum. So basically, if some of the elements in, in the given sequence are true, uh, then you return true. But this doesn't count if all of the elements are true. Because if all of the elements... Now, I know there is a kind of um, gray area because if all elements is just a special case of some elements. But in this case, in the instructions, we are given the fact that if all the elements are true, well then I want you to return false. So from this point of view, it's specified. Now what I did was basically having the length of the, the sequence and uh, setting up a counter starting from zero. And then I was looping through for each element in the sequence. And if the predicate that I was given is argument return true, so this syntax is very easy, I increase the count or the counter. You can call it whatever you want. I increase it. Uh, in the end, when the for loop is finished, so the sequence has been exhausted, um, if the count is equal to zero, meaning there is not not even one that is true, or the count is equal to length, so everyone, each element is true, well then you return false. Otherwise you return true, just like this. Yeah, this was pretty nice actually. I think I might have time for a new one. Let's do it. Change two-dimensional array, chicken sexing. <laughs> Okay, well, I hope I don't get, you know, censored, but let's try it. Bob is a chicken sexer. His job is to sort baby chicks into a male, M, and female, F, piles. When Bob, and there is no capital letter, well, when Bob can guess can throw his hands up and declare it with a uh, question mark. Bob's bosses don't trust Bob's ability just yet. So they have paired him with an expert sexer. All of Bob's decision will be checked against the expert choices to generate a correctness score. Hmm. Okay, so <laughs> it's quite fun. Scoring rules. When they agree, he gets one point. When they disagree, but one has said question mark, one, okay, so there is just one? How many bosses are there? Now, how many checkers are there? Oh, there is just one, an expert. Okay. He gets 0.5. When they disagree completely, he gets zero. Okay, so he gets zero if he totally screws up. If he says he's male, he said it's female. Actually, I mean, the expert is always right. So if the expert says, well, they just need to disagree and he gets zero points. But if either he or the expert puts a question mark, he gets 0.5. And if they agree, he gets one point. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm, I'm giving, this is a, a tuple with parentheses. 
and oh this is the score so this is a test so you can see what you can expect I think this is Bob's um, count and this is the expert count and they agree basically on everything so you got three points perfect this they agree on the first one and partially disagree on the two the latter two and you got two points because it's 1.5.5 this they basically disagree on each one and it gets zero point okay uh, I think that this decision will not be passed I think that the decision will not be passed as a double it will just be passed as a string let's try and do it here I'm so confident that I'm gonna do it here and this is where I'm going to fail miserably I could say decisions oh no they're gonna be passed as tuples yeah they are going to be passed as tuples well that's fine I'm gonna have a score at the beginning which is equal to zero then I'm gonna loop over Bob's decisions because I feel like it now actually I could loop over the expert decisions because his decisions or her decisions are going to be the one that set the standard I think well it doesn't really matter it's just overthinking decisions so I'm looping through the tuple Bob's decision and if I oh I need a I need the index and for this one I can use enumerate I think you use it like this put it inside and uh, enumerate gives you the index and the element I think the, the, the index is the first one let's see um, enum gets the iterable start and what gives you return value ba -ba -ba. you can convert a number yeah the index and the element so yeah okay so now that I have the index I can do it like this if element is equal to expert decision index i score plus equal one so this is a score if so this is equality let's do lf because lf element is equal to question mark score plus equal 0 0.5 I'm just wondering ah, okay yeah or expert decision I it's one of the two is equal to question mark because uh, if I have two question marks this is gonna catch it if this is not going to catch it it means that they're not equal so I want to see if one of these two is a question mark. If I basically finished all the options, so I say else, but I don't say anything because I don't do anything to the score. And in the, at the end, I just return the score. Hmm, it should work. I haven't test it in PyCharm let's see if my confidence betrays me probably will let's see ooh wow it didn't so it passed all the tests this basic test now the attempt is going to be harder way harder and 
it passed whoa 100 assertions wow without testing without even testing it's amazing yeah i know it's not very amazing because it's a 7q it's not very high level but again it is it is impressive okay it's a result why not let's submit it okay now i want to review some of this because ah the sound function i never use it the zip function this one i never use it for sure okay oh yeah i could have done this man the zip function was perfect for this because uh yeah the zip function basically does what a zip like the zip of a jacket does when you have two iterables you zip it together and it gives you um, it gives you an object which is an iterator is not an iterable so if you print it you're gonna print the object the zip object but you can look through it so like this and you get Bob's and the expert and from this it basically just says uh, give me the sum of b equal e or 0.5 times well this is interesting i think this if this evaluates is true this is going to be one um this is extremely clever because uh, true can be converted as one i think and zero is false so basically it's saying uh, the sum of this, this is going to be equal, so this is going to be 1 in the iteration or 0 0.5 times this. If this is false, it means that neither of this uh, are a question mark. And so this is going to be false, it's going to be 0, 0 0.5 times 0 is 0. Whereas if this is true, because I have the OR statement, it means that one of the two is a question mark. So it's going to be true. 1 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. These one line are super clever. Yeah, super clever. And again, the zip, the zip function is super relevant here. Because when you have two iterables and you want to be confront them, it is something that is very uh, useful. But I guess that the best solution for this problem, I mean, my solution was fine, but this solution using the zip function is probably what got you the, yeah, summa cum laude. Very clever. I like it. All right. Well, that was um, challenging. That was interesting, I'd say. And yeah, maybe these are not very difficult problems but it always takes a bit of creativity a bit of knowledge of the actual language and i don't think it did it that bad i mean the implementation were various and most of them were very clever but again i'm not a very big fan of one-liners they're very elegant why not but you know it's not always the best solution and even if you don't come up with a one-liner all the time it's not a problem it doesn't say anything about you as a coder and in these cases when you solve these kind of problems and you put yourself into it the most what can i say the easiest thing to do is just solve the problem then you can take time for yourself to refactor to maybe think about other solutions how you could have done things better but at first I mean, the solution of the problem is just the most important thing, the MVP. All right, so I really hope that you had fun. I had fun, actually. And uh, again, as always, if you like the content, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment down below with what you think about Code Wars, what you think about other websites like it. If you like it, if you don't like it, if you like the format, just let me know. Why not? For today is all. I'll see you to the next video. Stay tuned for more. Bye-bye. Oh, and by the way,